Hello, everybody. Good morning. Thanks for inviting me. Um, so um, I started Low Tech Magazine in 2007 after a career in as a high tech journalist, actually. Mm -hmm. And um, what I learned in, in, in my year as a, as a science and technology journalist is that um, technological solutions are often not really solutions. They're actually creating more problems. Just a second. Dakle, dobar dan, dobar dan, dobro jutro svima. Ja sam 2007. dakle, osnovao magazin, High Tech magazin, nakon dugogodišnje karijere u novinarstvu kao novinar koji se bavio visokim tehnologijama. I ono što sam tokom te karijere naučio je da vrlo često ta rješenja zapravo nisu rješenja, nego stvaraju samo probleme. Low Tech Magazine is a critique of the vision of a high-tech sustainable society, which mm -hmm. is very easy to summarize. We replace fossil fuels with renewable energy, mm -hmm. and we keep on living the same lifestyle. For example, we keep on driving fast and, and heavy cars, but then they're powered by electricity, by a battery charged with wind or solar power or water power, for example. Dakle, dakle low tech je zapravo odgovor na, na, na mogućnost da neke stvari promijenimo, neka visokotehnološka dostignuća promijenimo nekim drugim, a da nastavimo živjeti istim standardom. Otprilike vam je to kao da gorivo zamijenite električnom energijom i vozite jednako brza i, i snažna vozila. And this vision is pretty problematic because uh, renewable energy is a very different uh, type of energy source compared to fossil fuels. And I focus on three um, differences and the first is what scientists call power density. Mm -hmm. It's a lot more uh, land to produce a, a given amount of energy. And this is, for example... Just a second. You need a lot? You need a lot of land. Uh, okay. A lot of space. Yeah, yeah, I know. Um, and that is problematic in the sense that if you don't lower energy use, you're going to basically destroy the planet with... Uh, solar, uh, wind and, and water power uh, systems. Uh, dakle, radi se o tome da je ova vizija zapravo uh, da, da se obnovlji izvori energije uh, se strahovito razlikuju od onih klasičnih. Uh, radi, se neš, uh, radi se tu na nečemu što mi nazivamo gustoća uh, uh, energije, uh, jer vam uh, zapravo treba recimo mnogo zemlje ćete iskoristiti da biste proizveli određenu gustoću energije na uh, uh, solarni ili uh, uh, pogon vjetra. And the second problem is that uh, fossil fuels you can always use them whenever you want. Mm -hmm. But um, all other renewable power sources are intermittent. So it means they're not always available. And... Uh, just a second. Dakle, druga stvar je da fosilne izvore energije možete koristiti kad, kad želite, međutim, svi ostali koji se koriste kao, za obnovljive izvore energije, uh, uh, su, dakle, uh, uh, oni su povremeno, uh, 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 dakle, oni nisu stalno dostupni. To nije nešto što možete stalno koristiti. Yeah, and then you can solve the, the problem of intermittency, for example, with batteries, energy storage, but that brings us to the third problem, that all these renewable power plants are actually dependent on fossil fuels. So they are produced in factories that run on fossil fuels. And uh, in the case of wind turbines, for instance, even the, the windmill itself is actually plastic. So it's a product of oil. Uh, dakle, treći problem kod, kod domnovnih izvora energije je činjenica da uh, uh, to što vi nemate stalno dostupan uh, uh, njegov izvor vas vodi time da te uh, uh, Među, među vremena zapravo popunjavate korištenjem baterija ili nekih drugih e, sredstava koja se opet proizvode u fabrikama gdje se opet koriste fosilna goriva i neke, neke druge stvari. Dakle, ponovo se vraćamo a, a, na to. So, what we need to talk about, and of course we need to switch to renewable energy, but we need to talk about what's in the left corner at the bottom, the lifestyle. I mean, for example, the car, um, we have to reduce energy use. Mm -hmm. 
Dakle, kad govorimo o obnovljivim izvorima, ono što, do čega moramo doći, što moramo sagledati, je ono, ono što se nalazi recimo u srži određenih stvari, poput recimo automobila, dakle prije svega moramo smanjiti potrošnju energije. Ja, yeah, so for example, if we stay with uh, the example of cars, what you could do is make cars um, much slower, uh, much, um, much less comfortable and um, much less heavy, so lighter. And this, for example, is a car from um, almost, uh, wait, let me count, uh, 70, 80 years old. Okay. And you would think that today we have managed to make cars that are more energy efficient than we did in 1949, but that's actually not the case. Just a second. Dakle, uzmimo za primjer vozila. Ovdje imamo vozilo iz 1949. i šta se, na primjer, može učiniti sa vozilima? Ta vozila se mogu prije svega učiniti sporijim, dakle da sporije voze, mogu biti lakša, mogu biti manje udobna. I dakle, čovjek je pomislio da automobil od prije 80 godina je manje energetski učinkov. Međutim, yes? So here you see the... the... The smallest car from the same um, manufacturer, Citroën, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and it's actually, if you look at the uh, fuel use, then it, you see it's the same. So the the car from 2020 has the same uh, uses the same amount of fuel as the car from 1949. Citroën. <laughs> Uh, I pomislili bi ste da bi, da bi u smislu u, u, korištenja goriva, u, 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 potrošnje goriva, ovaj iz 2020. je bio bolji, međutim oni koriste istu količinu goriva. Yes? Yeah, so what happened is actually that um, it's strange because the, the engines have become much more energy efficient, but the problem is that instead of using that um, advance to lower energy use of the car, we actually made cars heavier, uh, faster, and we put them full of entertainment and electronics and, and automatic windows. And all these um, extra um, yeah, uh, things that are not really necessary, but um, they actually um, swallow all the advantages in energy efficiency. So the energy use, the fuel use, stays at around 5 liters per 100 kilometer. Dakle, radi se o tome da umjesto da smo, znači, dakle, motori su među vremenu napredovali, oni su energetski vrlo učinkoviti, dakle, vrlo efikasni. Međutim, ono što smo mi uradili, mi smo povećali težinu vozila, dodali smo opremu, sve razne, razne elektronske stvari, tako da zapravo u, u smislu sve ono što smo dobili na efikasnosti motora pri potrošnji goriva, smo izgubili na opremi, težini i svemu ostalom zašto vam treba a, 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 ta, ta potrošnja. I radi se o pet litara na uh, 100 yeah, and the same you see, uh, the same evolution you see with electric cars. So uh, electric cars are nothing new. They exist since the uh, late 19th century. And this is one from 1908, I, I think. Um, mm -hmm. And as you can see, it, it had a range of 100 miles, which is 160 kilometers, which is the same range as the Nissan Leaf, which uh, came on the market in 2012. So there the same happened, All the, the, although batteries became much more energy efficient, we used that progress to make cars heavier and faster. Da, radi se, evo, sljedeće je primjer su električni automobili, dakle, otprilike stogodišnja evolucija električnih automobila. Na slici vidimo automobil iz 1908. Čini mi se koji čije domet sa jednim punjenjem bio oko 160 km. Međutim, sve ono što smo dobili u smislu efikasnosti ili učinkovitosti vezano za, za motor ili za mašinu, izgubili smo na dodatnoj opremi, tako da Nissan iz 2012. Uh, električni automobil također ima uh, isti domet, naravno poboljšali smo uh, baterije koje koristimo u tim istim automobilima, ali smo izgubili na sve, svemu što je taj automobil opteretio. What is the solution? Well, you can make cars um, uh, much smaller, uh, lighter and, and, and less fast. And um, actually, if you imagine you put 
the, the energy efficient battery or engine of the new car in a car that is as uh, slow and light as a, a car from 1940 or the 1900s, then you have the result is a car that almost uses no more energy. So if you combine efficiency... Just a second, just a second. And what is the problem for this problem? You can make your automobile more, less, or less. One of the solutions is, for example, that it is a very modern motor sa sa visokom efikasnošću u malom potrošnjom i svime stavite u vrlo lagan automobil e, iz 1940 ili 1900 pa da dođete na nivo da otprilike gotovo i ne troši. Yeah and this is another example it's then um, it's a called a Velo Mobile. I hope there is a translation. Um, it's a recumbent bicycle um, that combines human power with uh, electric uh, battery and you can drive around 50 kilometers per hour and it uses like um, 80 times less energy than an electric car and uh, so I made a calculation if all Americans would uh, switch to electric vehicles if they would use this type of vehicle they already have more than enough uh, renewable energy to to power it for everybody and if they would instead use all a Nissan Leaf, a modern electric car, they would need to... Okay, 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 just a second, you are going to too long. Dakle, ja sam jedno, na ovom slajdu ima nešto što je on nazvao Dele Mobile, zaista mi napada ništa na pamet kao kao efikasan prijevod, radi se o kombinaciji vozila koji je kombinacija bicikla i vozila na pogon koji koristi bateriju. Dakle, može se kretati brzinom od 50 km na sat i koristi 80% energije manje nego klasični. Dakle, on je radio izračune i kada bi svi Amerikanci prešli na neku vrstu ovakvog vozila, onda bi ušteda bila tolika da bi mogli imati dovoljno obnovljivih izvora, obnovljive energije iz obnovljivih izvora za sve svoje građane. Instead, if they would all use a modern electric car like a Tesla or a Nissan Leaf, they would have to build 20 times more renewable power plants than they have now. So one scenario is actually realistic and sustainable and the other one is totally destructive and unrealistic. I dakle, radi se o tome da, 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 da je ideja da, da bi u tom slučaju Amerikanci umjesto Tesla i Nisana koje sada voze, kada bi uzeli ovako, ovakvu vrstu vozila, riješili taj problem budući da a, a, električna vozila poput Tesla i drugih tipova nisu rješenje obzirom na, na, na potrošnju, na, 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 na destruktivni karakter onoga što slijedi i za proizvodnje te a, energije. Ovo je za dvije osobe bilo, ne može baš dugo da vozi. And also, like, if you switch to slower cars and, and smaller vehicles, you also, the whole road infrastructure, the parking infrastructure, yeah, it, it's, you suddenly have uh, more than enough space and that space you can use for other things. Mm -hmm. Dakle, ovdje se radi o tome da se manja i lakša vozila, uh, zapravo, mislim da je ovo samo komparativno sa... Uh, nekim brzim autom Porscheom i ovaj mali do njega, da zapravo stvarate veći prostor koji možete iskoristiti u druge svrhe konkretno vezane za parkiranje. So the trolleybus, yeah, maybe in one little slide. Trolleybus is also electric transportation, but without batteries. So this is actually a very sustainable alternative that used to exist almost everywhere in Europe, and now they're all gone. But it's um, because it doesn't need a battery, you have all the advantages of electric transportation, but not all the disadvantages that come with batteries and... and uh... Dakle, uh, uh, trolejbusi uh, koji su zapravo uh, veoma učinkovito rješenje u smislu korištenja energije, obzirom da nemaju baterije, uh, dakle, direktno su prikopčani na, na mrežu i go, uh, uh, time se zapravo imaju sve prednosti korištenja električne energije, a nemaju niti jednu, mm. budući da nemaju mm. baterija, niti jednu uh, manu uh, ili štetnu posljedicu. Nekad ih je bilo diljem Evrope, sada su gotovo uh, svi nestali. Uh, they also had trolley trucks in history. Next uh, 
ovo su neki istorijski, uh, 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 dakle bili su i, i kamioni koji su... Uh, so... Yeah, and then above the slide before you see they also had boats. You had canal transportation in, that was in France, Belgium and Germany where you actually have trolley boat lines, 3000 kilometers. Uh, dakle, bile su i takozvane troli uh, uh, brodske linije Francuska, Belgija i Njemačka. Prije toga smo vili, vidjeli troli i kamione, a ovi čamci su imali uh, rutu pokrivenu čak 3000 km se moglo preći. So, this was an example uh, from transportation, but actually the same philosophy, the same way of thinking, you can apply it to any other uh, technology or social practice. Mm-hmm. And the next example is uh, heating for example is mm-hmm. heating okay uh, dakle uh, sljedeći slaj govori o tome da s, da smo mi govorili o prijevozu međutim ista filozofija ista logika može se primijeniti uh, i na različite uh, dakle uh, uh, sfere života ovdje se radi o what did you say eating or knitting heating Heating, heating, okay, sorry. Uh, ovdje se radi o grijanju, zagrijavanju prostorija. Okay? Yes. So if you compare uh, modern heating systems with historical heating systems, um, mm-hmm. these days in, in, in the most advanced countries, everybody basically heats the volume of air in a room. Mm-hmm. So you're going to heat the whole building, the whole space. And if you look at historical heating systems, Mm-hmm. You see that people created local microclimates and then basically rather than heating the building they were heating the people mm-hmm. much more efficient. Uh, dakle uh, kroz istoriju ljudi su uh, dakle u moderno vrijeme u današnje doba mi zapravo zagrijavamo uh, cijeli volumen zraka koji se nalazi u zgradi uh, uh, u konačnici zagrijavate zgradu. Ljudi su kroz istoriju koristili te neke lokalne mikrosisteme gdje su zapravo omogućavali da se griju samo ljudi, a ne cijela zgrada. Yeah, maybe next slide. These are I'm I'm gonna yeah, that what the, the slides you see now it's ways to like people were sitting historically in front of a of a wood fire for example and then because it's a radiant heat source so the back your back is cold so then they had all kinds of ways to kind of Um, not just local heating systems, but also local insulation. So instead of insulating your house, they were basically insulating the persons, for example, with a chair like this. Dakle, sljedeći slajd je zapravo primjer onoga da su se ljudi istorijski grijali ispred vatre, otvorene vatre ili kamina. U tom slučaju kad sjedite negdje, hladna su vam leđe što se reklo upasni, pa su koristili sve moguće načine da taj dio koji nije bio direktno pod utjecajem grejanja izoliraju i na neki način, a, 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 to su primjeri šta su sve ljudi radili, odnosno kako su se... Uh, uh, yeah, and this is another example. This is the the four poster bed, and uh, so in old, uh, older, earlier times, people did only need one room in their in their house, and for example, the bedroom was cold, but you had a, a bed with curtains, and basically, when you went to sleep, the the body heat of the persons inside um, was kept in the bed by this curtain. So was also you created a, cli- a microclimate in a cold room. Dakle, sljedeći slajd je krevet s baldahinom. Uh, to je uh, izum koji je potekao iz činjenice da su ljudi uglavnom uh, grijali samo jednu prostoriju u kući. Uh, spavače sobe su uvijek bile hladne. Uh, razlog zašto se stavljao uh, dakle, zavise, odnosno baldahin iznad kreveta je činjenica da, uh, da tjelesna toplota dok spavate, koju emitirate, na neki način ovim zavisama se sačuva unut, uh, unutar kreveta i uh, za, uh, zagrijava vas. Yeah, this is, and, and so this is a historical way of heating, but you can use, you can combine it with more modern technology. And for example, this is a Japanese kotatsu. Mm-hmm. And the Japanese have always kept this tradition of heating people instead of heating spaces. Mm-hmm. And they just um, improved this um, uh, system by using an electric heater instead of a coal fire. Mm-hmm. putting it underneath a table uh, with a blanket and then the people basically uh, put their feet under the blanket and um, are warm in comfortable in a cold room. 
Dakle, ovo je sljedeći primjer su, dakle, je iz Japana. Japan, Japanci uvijek su bili skloniji principu da treba grijati ljuda, ne prostore. Tako da je ovo komacu nekakav, ajmo reći, modernija verzija vrlo starog sistema gdje oni koriste električne grijače koje stavljaju ispod stola, a preko, preko ispod stola također stavljaju neku vrstu, ja bih rekla da je ovo jorgan, ali ajmo reći pokrivača, a, tako da ta električna top, toplota stvorena ispod pokrivača ostaje grijeva noge i a, ugodno. Yeah, and so you can do that um, also with very like uh, electric heating for example in uh, a desk chair but also in the desk itself so that you heat um, directly the, the, the skin by uh, really very local heating and uh, it's like you can heat a person with like 100 times less energy than what we do now and uh, just by being very smart and local uh, by using local heating Ok, uh, dakle ovo sljedeći primjer je uh, dakle, grijači koji su ugrađeni u vašu uh, kancelarijsku uh, stolicu, radnu stolicu ili sami stol, uh, time uh, vi zapravo grijete direktno svoju kožu i uh, proračuni su da je potrošnja energije na ovaj način uh, nekih uh, sto puta manja uh, budući da je ona skroz lokalizirana i usmjerena na vas. So it's another thing about renewable energy. If you look at the past, because renewable energy is nothing that we invented. It's, we have been using it for thousands of years. And so uh, the windmill and the sailboat are examples. They were basically uh, providing uh, the power for um, uh, industry and transportation, global transportation. Uh-huh. A, dakle, a, ovdje imamo primjer jedrenjaka, dakle radi se o tome da su obnovljivi a, 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 izvori energije nešto što mi, a, što nije a, dakle, a, izum od jučer, to se koristi a, dugo godina za, uglavnom za prijevoz, a, snaga a, energija vjetra. A, yes? Yeah, next slide please. And it's interesting because they didn't have... Um batteries in, in, in earlier times. So I wondered a lot how they uh, de- dealt with the fact that wind power is not always available um, mm-hmm. instead of building energy storage infrastructure. And what they did was very simple. They only worked, uh, operated the windmills or the sailboats when it was windy. And mm-hmm. if it was not windy, they just didn't work. A, dakle, sljedeći, ovo je sad primjer kako su se oni u prošlosti a, borili sa a, dakle, tom nestalnošću izvora energije u smislu vjetra. Dakle, ono što su oni radili, naprosto plovilo se i mljelo se žito na vjetrenjačama samo kad ima vjetra, a kad ga nema, onda te aktivnosti nisu obavljane. And here is a, a recent project by a, a student um, who actually made a modern version of that uh, way of thinking. It, uh, it's a windmill that uh, knits scarves when the wind blows. So it works automatically and whenever the wind blows, it continues knitting the scarf and then when there's no wind, it just stops. A, sljedeći izum je izum jednog studenta. Dakle, radi se o vjetrenjači koja kad ima vjetra plete šal Uh, ukoliko nema vjetra, onda nema ni, tog, uh, ni toga da ta vjetrenjača pro, proizvodi šal, odnosno pleti. Yeah, that one. And so that's actually um, this way of thinking, like using renewable energy when it's available. You can apply it to a lot of modern technologies. Um, for example, you could imagine freight trains that only, uh, just like a sailboat, that only uh, run when it's windy or it's sunny, depending on which power source you use. Uh-huh. Dakle, uh, ovo rješenje o kojem smo malo prije govorili, da, da zapravo koristite energiju samo onda kada je dostupna, a, a govorili smo o jedrenjacima i vjetrenjačama, bi se u neku ruku uh, mogla primijeniti i na vozove koji pravoze kontejnere. Uh, dakle, da uh, rješenje bude da oni idu samo onda kad ima takvih izvora energije. I've given some historical examples, so I... I research a lot of historical knowledge systems technology and then i also try to apply that knowledge with in a modern life say and this is for example um, my home office 
Mm -hmm. So I'm in Barcelona and that means we have a lot of sun. So you have to choose the power source you have. But um, I used, I managed to power my office with just five small uh, solar panels. Mm -hmm. uh, dakle, ja sam, kao što ste vidjeli, dala Ovo je primjer kako sam ja sa pet malih solarnih panela, odnosno čelija, uspjevam održati nivo energije potreban u mojoj kancelari. Inače, napomena je da živi u Barceloni, koja je jako sučan grad, tako da ima dovoljno sunca i svijeta. Ja, so, and I actually applied, it's a bit strange that with just five solar panels you can power an office, but... There's several reasons why it works. First, I choose to operate the whole system on low voltage, so 12 volts. And it's basically how people build electricity systems in caravans or boats. And it's okay, just a second. Dakle, uh, uh, postoje različit način da ovo uradite. Uh, 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 razlog zašto, kako sam, zašto sam ja uspio da izradim cijeli sistem u svojoj kući, dakle, da ga utemelji na, na ovim solarnim panelima, činjenica da koristi nisko naponski, a, 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 niski napon, od, od prilike svega, dvane, svega 12 volti. Yes? Yeah, and that means that you don't have to convert to 20 volts and then back to 12 volts, because many uh, appliances actually work on 12 volts. Mm -hmm. You win around 30% of, of energy with that. So, um, and the same goes with water power. If you use direct current low voltage energy instead of converting it and sending it far away uh, you need much less water power or solar panels mm -hmm. uh, dakle radi se o tome da sam dakle cijeli sistem u kući i u svojoj kancelariji svom uredu uh, podesio na 12 volti što je niski napon uh, time se izbjegava uh, čin, uh, 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 transformacija da sa 220 idete na 12 i opet natrag je budući da većina uređaja može da radi i funkcionalna je na 12 volti Time se uh, štedi oko 30% energije, uh, a isto se odnosi i na uh, snagu vode kao i na uh, solarnu energiju. I also, so the, the thing, of course, solar power is different from water power, but you have a very strong seasonal effect that in summer I basically can do anything I want, and in winter I have to check the weather and... Um, if it is cloudy, for example, I use much less light um, or next slide. Uh, dakle, uh, ovo je samo primjer uh, da dakle, solarna energija ima sezonski efekt. Uh, vrlo slično je i sa energijom koja se dobije snagom vode. Uh, naime, promjene u jačini svjetlosti su nešto što utječe da uh, ljeti mogu raditi gotovo uh, sve što poželim i ne razmišljajući. Uh, zimi, kad je, nema dovoljno svjetlosti, moram prvo provjeriti da bih uh, vidio da li to i uh, uh, određene stvari mogu raditi. Yeah, and so if you have a limited energy supply, you become very creative in searching for solutions. And for example, when it's a cloudy day and I have very little energy in my office, I discovered a lot of alternatives. So one, the most radical one is a typewriter. Uh, it needs no electricity. But also what I found is that with a tablet and a keyboard, I, I only need three watts and I can actually do my work with almost no energy. So there is a huge um, space for, uh, for lowering energy use and still having modern technology operate. Uh, dakle, ono, ono što sam zaključio u, u tog svojih istraživanjima, istraživanja je kada, kada želite postići energosku učinkovitost, smanjiti potrošnju energije, vrlo ste kreativni. Dakle, kada nema dovoljno svjetlosti, ja u kancelariji sam se odlučio za vrlo radikalno rješenje. Dakle, ne koristim ni računar, ni, ni, ni tablet, ni ništa, nego klasičnu pisačnu mašinu kojoj ne treba ni struja, ni ništa. Uh, a uh, isto tako sam uh, uh, utvrdio da za tablet treba svega 3 volte, tako da uh, i to je rješenje uh, uh, koje uh, primjenjuje. Yeah, so this part is about the internet. Um, that's maybe a bit long way. Um, so I also applied the same thinking to my website, because of course I'm a, I'm, I am a publisher, 
and uh, the internet is also a problematic energy user. Mm -hmm. um, next slide, please. Dakle, on je, on izdaje i na svom websajtu kaže, naravno, kao izdavač pokušava primijeniti na svoj websajt na sve što radi ove principe o kojima je govorio. Yeah, and so we have been told that the internet will actually solve a lot of uh, environmental problems, but it has become a, a huge user of energy itself. Mm -hmm. Dakle, pričalo se o tome da će internet zapravo riješiti jako puno problema vezano za energiju, međutim, sam, sama internetska mreža i njegovo korištenje uh, je zapravo, koristi se u potrošnje energije jako velika. And uh, people have this idea that it's all in the cloud, it's like a, a kind of thing that floats around the internet, but there's actually a, a massive infrastructure behind it and that needs a lot of energy. A dakle, ljudi prečesto misle da se radi o nekom oblaku koji ledi iznad nas i rješava sve te probleme, međutim, iza same internetskih konekcija i kompletnog sistema stoji ogromna masivna infrastruktura koja, ju, koja daje podršku radu same mreže. And when you go look into the reasons why uh, the energy use of internet is growing, you see that something very similar is happening to what is happening with cars and with any other technology. So uh, just like cars, websites have become much heavier. So mm -hmm. here you see in just 10 years, the average website has become three times heavier. Dakle, kao i u svemu drugome i vezano za internet i web stranice, a u poređenju sa onim primjerom koji sam dao za automobile, dakle, radi se o tome da su web stranice postale tri puta teže, kao što su i automobili postali teži, pa time traže više uh, energy. And a second factor is that we are always online now. So 15, 20 years ago, being on the internet was something you did when you had to look up something, uh, when you were sitting at your desk. But now, because of wireless internet, wireless computers, we are constantly online. And that also includes, increases energy use a lot. A uh, druga stvar koja također uh, značajno povećava potrošnju energije je činjenica da smo prije 15-20 godina uh, internet koristili samo onda kad nas je nešto zanimalo pa smo vršili neke pretrage. Uh, sada smo u mogućnosti da budemo uh, stalno uh, da tako, uh, online i uh, Wi-Fi, dakle bežični, uh, bežična veza je omogućila da se uh, konektujemo uh, svugdje uh, što u konačnici završava većom potrošnjem energiji. Next slide, please. And you can skip that one, the next. Mm -hmm. Yes, so actually um, I got a bit like, hey, I'm talking about uh, sustainability and low-tech solutions, but my website's actually very high-tech. So um, <laughs> I, again, also in internet design, I looked to the past for inspiration and I found it in the first website that was ever made in 1992. Here you see it. Mm -hmm. uh, dakle, on kaže, ja ono čime se bavi i neke stvari je našao u prvoj ikad uh, stvorenoj uh, uh, web stranici, čiji izgled vidite na ekranu. 92. je, o, govorimo o 92. Yeah, so and here is the website. Uh, what we did is make it very lightweight. So instead of following the trend to increasingly heavier uh, websites, we did it the other way around. And we made a website that's 10 times lighter. Mm -hmm. Dakle, ono što smo radili vezano za našu uh, web stranicu, uh, išli smo obrnutim putem, uh, dakle, učinili smo ju deset puta lakšom uh, uh, nego što, uh, dakle, nismo, uh, išli smo u suprotnom pravcu od današnjih uh, stremljenja. Yes? Next slide. Um, and how we did that one important um, thing we did, because you saw that the first website ever made had no images and images are really um, take much more space than than text but um, I didn't want to get rid of the images so instead we uh, compress them in a radical way mm -hmm. and here you see the result it's called dithering uh, I don't know if there's a translation but it's not yeah. so important to me. 
Dakle, ono što, su on, što je on uradio, kao što ste vidjeli, jedna prva ika stvara na web stranica nije se državala fotografije, budući da fotografije, da tako kažemo, gutaju u prostor. Ono što je on uradio nije se u potpunosti htio riješiti fotografija, nego ih je kompresovao na način, upotrebio je, ajmo reći, jedan najpizraz koji vam ja ne mogu prevesti i do rezultat je ovo. If you make a lightweight website, you can actually, um, it uses so little energy that you can run it on a very small computer, which you see here in, in, uh, to the right. And uh, you can actually power it yourself. Mm-hmm. At your, it's what I did. So I have the website hosted in my apartment with a solar panel uh, on the balcony, which you see uh-huh. in the slide, I think. I ako napravite svoju stranicu, da tako kažem, lakšom kakvom sam ja napravio, onda je mogućnost da uh, ju vodite uh, sa vrlo malog računara, kao što vidite na ovoj slici, a da izvor energije također imate u svojoj kući, u, slu- u ovom slučaju se radi o solarnom panelu. Yeah, so that's the solar panel. Solarna ploča. Yeah, and then this... Um... It's a solar power, and as I said, in winter there's much less energy available. And um, to keep it sustainable, because of course you can add many batteries and keep it online the whole time, but then you need a lot of fossil fuels to produce the batteries. Mm-hmm. So a much more sustainable solution is to um, when the weather is bad and it's cloudy for uh, two or three days, then the website goes down and it just disappears as if it's a sailboat or a windmill. Mm-hmm. And then it comes back when the sun shines again. <laughs> dakle, jedno rješenje koje ja primjenjujem a, vezano za, za obnovljive izvore energije, dakle, a, kada je loše vrijeme, recimo dva do tri dana, kad nema dovoljno svjetlosti i nema, nema dovoljno energije da se pokrene a, web stranica, umjesto korištenja baterija koje u, u, u konačnici opet dovode do korištenja fosilnih goriva i dakle a, svega što ide uz to, a, a, web stranice se naprosto ugasi, nestane, otprilike onako kako su radili jedrenjaci i prestale raditi ove vjetranjače, a čim sunce zasija, mi smo ponovo online. Yeah, so we gave a bit of, because people are a bit confused by a website that's not always online, so we put like a battery meter uh, that's here at 50%. Uh, stavili se ovaj uh, mjerač uh, da, da, i upozorenje, jer su se ljudi nekad uh, zapravo jako bili zbunjeni, sad ima stranice, sad nema, kakva je to stranica koja nije online. And we also put a weather forecast, so because the, the, the accessibility of the website depends... <laughs> <laughs> in Barcelona, but the readers are not always in Barcelona, so you have to make them clear about the context of mm-hmm. the, um, the website. A isto tako objavljujemo i vremensku prognozu. Dakle, da čitaoci koji, dakle, oni koji su u Barceloni, oni znaju kako je vrijeme, međutim, čitaoci nisu uvijek u Barceloni, tako da shodno vremenskoj prognozi mogu znati da li će oni biti Yeah, and we also made a printed website, actually. Um, that's a printed version of the website. And, um, of course, in the end, it's just about the content. So the internet is uh, a handy technology, but uh, if it would disappear, it would also not be such a problem. Um, but, okay, <laughs> let's go to the next slide. Dakle, ovdje se, mi smo isto tako radili i štampanu verziju websajta, a, naravno, a, a, uvijek se radi, uvijek je do sadržaja, radi se o sadržaju, a ne, ne, ne o formi u kojoj se pojavljuje. A, internet je zgodna tehnologija, ali šta bi bilo kad bi ona nestala, pa nastavilo bi se živjeti. Less than minutes, ok. Then I'm going to say something about the human power, because um, it's an energy source that we are often talking about, yeah, nuclear, water power, wind power, solar power, but there's also human power. Mm-hmm. And it needs to be the most important energy source in, in history. Dakle, ono što sam još htio govoriti koju riječ je energija, ljudska energija, energija ljudi. Dakle, vrlo često govorimo o nuklearnoj i svim drugim vrstama energije. Međutim, zaboravljamo na energiju čovjeka koja je bila ključna i najvažnija u istoriji čovječanstva. So this is, for, for example, this is a human powered crane. Ovo je dakle kran ili koji se koji se pokreće snagom ljudskom snagom. This is the 
digging the Panama Canal. So all the canals and and but also all buildings from in history were built and and dug by hand. A ova izgradnja Panamskog kanala i jako dakle gotovo sve velike velike građevine kanali u istoriji čovečanstva su iskopani rukom snagom ruku. Fast forward to 2021 and you have things like this which is a battery powered pepper mill that I saw at my parents place. So uh-huh. instead of um, kind of doing this movement you press yes. a button and the battery does the work. That's how we evolved in history. Dakle, ovo je primjer iz 2020. Znači, ovo su mlinovi za biber na koji imaju u sebi bateriju. Dakle, umjesto pokreta koji je gospodin Slikovito pokazao, obrtanja ili mljevenja, imamo baterije za koje se koristi sve što znamo i koji za nas urade posao. To je otprilike kako smo evoluirali do ovih dana. I was I cooperated with the artist in the Netherlands Mella Smets to we we did a work an artwork about human power and um because the interesting thing about this power source is that if you have to produce your own power you gonna think twice about how much you need because we are basically lazy uh, beings and we don't want to spend too much effort uh, digging canals and building houses and producing energy Dakle, ja sam radio sa, sa umjetnicima iz Nizozemske, čija imena je pomenuo, radio sam neke projekte vezano za, za, za snagu, znaku tijela i kažu, u osnovi smo mi lijene osobe, budući da ne želimo da gradimo zgrade i, i, i ostalo, dakle, radi se o, o, o potrošnji i proizvodnji te ljudske energije. Yeah, so we uh, follow the course in a fitness center to become better power sources. Mm-hmm. Uh, next slide. Uh, I onda smo očili na, na kurs u fitness center da bismo postali bolji izvori energije u sklopu toga. And we calculated all the, the energy potential of all the uh, fitness appliances in, in that fitness center. Mm-hmm. I izračunali smo dakle, energiju od svih ovih uređaja koje recimo taj fitness center sadržava u sebi. And then we built a human power plant. So like a solar power plant, water power plant, you also could build a, a human power plant. I onda And smo izgradili, just a second, i onda smo izgradili elektranu koju pokreće snaga a, 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 tijela, dakle ljudi. Yes. And... Um, Yeah, then we, at, when we ex, ex, expose it, when we show it, we invite a team of bodybuilders who then uh, basically produce electricity mm-hmm. uh, instead of water power or... Uh, onda uh, smo, kad smo pravili izložbu te, aj, ja ću sad uh, reći elektrane na ljudski pogon, pozvali bodybuildere koji su onda zapravo uh, proizvodili električnu energiju umjesto uh, vjetra, vode i tako dalje. And if you think about it, human power has a lot of advantages compared to solar or water or wind. Um, it's always available. Um, humans don't need to be produced in factories. We make each other. Um, we are uh, also the power source grows as the population grows, while other power sources need to be shared among an increasing amount of people. Iako razmislite, energia ljudi, energia ljudskog tijela je zapravo a nešto što je dostupno ne, ka, a, dakle sve ostale izvore energije vjetra solarni i ostalo morate dijeliti sa sve većim brojem stanovništva a u isto vremeno pomislite na to da nas je sve više pa i izvor sami kao takav a, a, se poveća and then we kind of um, use that idea of, of human power to design a human power student building so a building with 750 students where they live there and the only energy source is human power and we want to know if that possible Mi smo onda sljedeći sljedeći što smo radili pokušali smo da vidimo napravili smo takozvanu studentsku zgradu pokušali smo da vidimo da li je moguće da svi ti studenti žive rade i borave u tom području u toj zgradi a da se sve odvija na temelju snage tijela odnosno ljudske snage Yeah, and actually, so we, we calculated all the energy use that goes into the building that 
can be produced by humans and then see if it's enough to have a modern life. And uh, this, for example, is um, the individual room. And people, students choose uh, their favorite uh, fitness machine to power their computer in their room and their lights. Mm -hmm. Just a second. Dakle, pokušali smo da izračunamo potrošnju energije. Uh, da li je moguće da se sva ta potrebna energija za sve te studente i ljude koji tu žive uh, uh, zapravo proizvede snagom uh, ljudskih tijela i da istovremeno održavamo uh, nekakav uh, uh, moderan, uh, moderan način života. Uh, zamolili smo studente da odaberuju svoju omiljeni, uh, omiljenu spravu iz teretane na, ko, na kojoj će proizvoditi električnu energiju, odnosno energiju. Yes? And we uh, designed a kind of uh, community heating system. So you see in the back there is this pipe. Mm -hmm. And um, if you go to the next slide, mm -hmm. you see that this pipe actually brings energy from, from brings heat from mm -hmm. the communal uh, power plant. So there is three floors in the building where students are generating power, but the body, when it's active, it generates also a lot of heat. Mm -hmm. uh, just yeah. a second. Dakle, imali smo na tri mjesta ovaj zajedničke centre koji su proizvodili energiju. Kao što vidite, uh, studenti svojim tijelima, svojim vodanjem proizvode energiju, međutim, istovremeno uz proizvodnju energije proizvode i mnogo toplote. Yeah. And if you go back one slide to yes so here you see this pipe you can uh, open the the vents and then the the body heat from your other students comes comes in your room ah. but if it's really cold you can even plug in a suit so you get into the suit and then you plug it into the system and then you really only have to heat the 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 small volume of air between your body and the and the suit so then it's really your the other students, your friends, um, body heat that is actually uh, heating you, keeping you comfortable. Dakle, uh, kroz ove rešetke, kad vam je zima, otvorite, dođe vam ta lijepa toplota iz tih zajedničkih prostora gdje se proizvodi energija. Ako vam je hladno, možete priključiti uh, ovo uh, odijelo. Uh, I u tom slučaju zapravo grijete, uh, imate da zagrijete samo mali prostor između vašeg tijela i odijela, a inače koristite ono što proizvode vaše kolege studenti. So yeah, this is, I mean, uh, I want to make clear this is an art project, so it's very radical, but um, it's interesting to see that if you really think this through, you can actually do a lot with very little energy. Mm -hmm. Darano, ovo je... Ovo je umjetnički pro, projekat pa je po svojoj suštini eh, radikalan. Međutim, ono što, sam, što smo željeli postići je da ako malo bolje razmislite, eh, jako puno stvari se može učiniti sa jako malo energije. Yeah, so this is also part of the solution was to do communal uh, spaces. So we have communal showers, we have a communal kitchen and that really helps a lot to reduce the energy. And... Ovo je isto tako jedan pokušaj da prikažemo kako možemo uštedjeti i malo koristiti energije. To su takozvani zajednički prostori za tuširanje i razno razne druge aktivnosti, jer se samim tim onda i sve druga, sva, sva druga potrošnja ovaj, smanjuje energije i ostalo. Yeah, this is um, the, the, the weekly schedule of, of the students, um, mm -hmm. an example. And actually what we did when we had the, the student building the design ready, we put an ad on, on the internet in the Netherlands Um, and we said we have uh, 750 human-powered uh, rooms, student rooms available. Mm -hmm. In 24 hours, we got 60 people asking, telling us they wanted to rent it. Mm -hmm. So that's surprising for us, but there's apparently a market for human-powered student rooms. <laughs> dakle, ovo je raspored koji smo objavili online, dakle, aktivnosti po danima. Isto tako smo objavili da imamo 750 studentskih soba koje, koje se dakle, griju i sve se odvija od njima na, zahvaljujući ljudskoj energiji. I za 24 sata smo dobili već 6 prijavljen, 60 prijavljenih koji su bili zainteresirani za to. Dakle, postoji tržište i za ovakve stvari. But also we have um, on the roof, we put some uh, solar panels and wind turbines. And when it's windy or, or sunny, actually the students don't have to power. Uh, 
and they can enjoy all the decadent high technology that we have. <laughs> Na, na krov smo stavili isto tako ovaj, neke solarne panele, neke ove varijante za, za, za korištenje vjetra, pa kad je vjetrovito i sunčano, onda studenti mogu, mogu da uživaju ovim dekadentnim high-tech stvarima na krov. So, in fact, and that's where it became clear that it's actually not just an artwork, but it's actually, it has practical value because the humans are, are the battery. Tad je postalo zapravo jasno da to nije samo umjetnički projekat, nego ima jednu praktičnu vrijednost, jer ljudska tijela su zapravo baterije energije. 